I am Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today, the Lepus. This is an ultra compact mag and grip mini flywheel blaster designed by Jackrabbit Nerfer in the UK. There's a few options when putting the Lepus together. This one uses standard 130 size motors. I'm using Merlin's by Flywheel the World. Hurricane flywheels. I've wired this one up with a MOSFET, allowing higher gauge wire for the higher current that these motors draw. And I've also got full cycle control at the back. And the pusher motor is a micro N20 size that comes with a variety of geared ratios. I'm using a 30 to one version, which gives me a crazy 20 darts per second. Before we start though, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like if you enjoy my content. All right, let's have a look inside. Okay, so here are my parts for the Lepus. We've got the grip, so the trigger switches will go here. This holds the magazine like so. We've got the bottom half of the main part of the shell, so a couple of screws holding that in that go into here. Flywheel cage sit like so. Again, that's got four screws holding that in place and the battery case goes over the top. In the back I've already put in this brass heat set for my thumb screw so when that's in place like that the thumb screw from behind will hold that together. So Flywheel the World motors I'll be using. Uh, 130 size motors fit into this cage as per usual, I had to drill two millimeter and six millimeter holes. I could probably tidy that up just a little. So they hold the motors in uh, just like any other flywheel build and then hurricane wheels over the top. So they'll sit in like so. Uh, one of the reasons I went with the flywheel the world motors was because although they're great on 3S for micro size flywheels, very high speed, they're still quite high on 2S which should suit these uh, mini wheels well and mean that I can use a 2S LiPo, uh, this Turnergy Bolt 500 milliamp hour um, HV, so uh, slightly higher voltage, which will, being 2S, is a bit slimmer and so that will fit into the battery compartment a bit easier and leave more space for the wiring and so on the inside. So that's why I went with Merlin's and that's why I've gone with a 2S LiPo. So at the back we've got uh, an N20 motor. This is a 12 volt 3000 RPM version. Again, running on 2S, it'll be somewhat lower than that. Well, around 2000 RPM uh, or so. So the only thing I've done to this is grind off the shaft. So it's now the same depth as this piece that attaches to the shaft and holds the pusher. And this is the pusher, so that'll attach on there and as this spins around pusher will go back and forth. So they're the printed pieces, one, two, three, six printed pieces, two flywheels, two flywheel motors, one pusher motor. So M2 screws to hold the wheels in the cage. Then I've got some M2.6, some eight millimeter and some 10 millimeter screws to hold the various parts in the blaster, the longer ones will hold the magwell or the grip in place there. Um, the eight millimeter ones will hold the flywheel cage in place and a few other bits and pieces. Switches, so in the grip here, these are, I haven't actually used these before, these are sub-miniature micro switches. So this is the size micro switch that you'll get with uh, like your worker kits for use in the Strife and so on. And you can see these ones are quite a bit smaller again. So they will fit in and line up with these holes in the grip. Uh, uh, MOSFET, so MOSFET will sit up somewhere up here in the shell rather than having higher gauge wire run through the grip piece itself. So I got a few colors just to make it easier putting together. 22 AWG to go through the grip and through the back of the blaster for the pusher motor. And of course to the signal pin of the MOSFET. And then I've got 18 AWG wire for the flywheels um, back and forth to the LiPo. So MOSFET, resistor and diode all go together. And then XT30 connectors. 
so the male end will be wired in to the wiring in the blaster the female end I'm going to put onto my LiPo so this comes with the JST connector JST connector is actually only rated for I think 5 amps uh, continuous whereas the XT30 is rated for 30 amps so I don't want to use the JST I'll replace it with always the female end of the XT30 which actually I'm going to do first so that I can then put this on and charge while I build the rest of the blaster now if you haven't ever swapped over the connector on a LiPo before it's straightforward the main thing is to only do one wire at a time so what I'll do is say start with the red I'll cut the red off somewhere or other uh, expose some wire solder it into the positive side of the connector here and heat shrink that so I've got several thicknesses of heat shrink so seal that all up so that there's nothing exposed on the red wire without touching the black wire then when I'm happy with that I'll cut the black wire from here and that'll free this end expose some of the wire under there solder that up to the negative side and then heat shrink that and that way I can safely change the connector over from JST to XT30 and never have both positive and negative leads exposed at the same time so there's no chance that they could inadvertently touch each other and cause a short on the LiPo so uh, it's not a complicated procedure but if you're doing this please make sure only do one wire at a time never have both exposed at once so as I say I'll swap this connector over first I'll show you what that looks like then I can put this onto charge when I go and carry on with the rest of the wiring okay and there we are so red to the positive black to the negative uh, and that's all nice and secure and all sealed up in heat shrink so I'll go and put that onto charge and then talk about what we're doing with the rest okay let's talk about wiring up these switches so the two teeny ones uh, the bottom is our rev trigger of course and then the upper one is our firing trigger so the rev trigger will be connected to the battery using a red wire uh, red to the battery positive I'll connect that to the normally open terminal which is in the center and then the common I will use a orange wire and that's going to go to the left hand pin of the MOSFET so pulling the trigger will deliver a positive current to that and that will complete the current using my 18 gauge wire wired to the flywheel motors positive and negative positive directly to the battery terminal negative through the middle and center pins back to the negative of the battery so orange will be the signal that will complete that circuit so that's the two wires to the lower rev trigger switch the firing trigger I only want the pusher motor to be able to spin when the flywheels are running so I'm also going to take the orange lead and as well as going to the MOSFET I'm going to go from the common here to the normally open pin again that's the center one on the firing trigger and what that will ensure is that if the rev trigger isn't being held pulling the upper firing trigger won't do anything so orange to the normally open the common I will use let's say gray so gray from the common which is the lowest pin that's going to go to the pusher motor to one tab and then the normally closed I'll use white and that will go to my cycle control switch so that's four wires that I'll wire up to these two switches I'll go and do that now before I wire up the rest of it and we can see how it looks when they're put in place in the grip okay so I've finished wiring these up now the amount of space is pretty minimal so I need to be held really quite tightly together you can see how um, large gauge wire would be very very difficult to fit in here so as mentioned red will go to the battery positive orange carries the signal stopping by the normally open on the uh, firing trigger and then that'll go onto the MOSFET grey goes to the pusher motor from the common and the normally closed 
is white and that'll be cycle control. So other than fitting things in neatly, and you can see I've sort of soldered to the, not the tip of the pin, but a bit further down so that I don't use too much depth. The only other tricky thing was getting this distance for the orange wire to attach to the normally open pin in the center there. So I just lined that up and measured that right. But now if I sort of hold this like so, that should fit in there. It's not going anywhere. Now, fitting that into here, I can just feed these wires all up. In the bottom of here, you can see a little hole there. That's where I'll feed my wires through one by one. Of course it would be easier if I'd cut these to length, but I don't know what length I need, so I'll do that later. This isn't too difficult to work with. There we are. I don't know if this is hubris, but uh, I'm gonna go and stick my screws down through here to hold that in place on the assumption I'll never need to take it apart again. It's pretty solid. It all moves nicely. Okay, good. Pretty happy with that. Okay, to make this a little easier to work with for now, so red, that's gonna go to the battery. The uh, orange will go to the MOSFET. It'll be somewhere here, so let's cut that off. The grey will go to the pusher motor, that'll sit in here, so... And white will go to the cycle control, which will sit uh, back here, so... Again, that's going to be long enough. Okay, so that's a bit neater for now. So that'll be something like that. Three wires that way, one that way. Okay, next thing I'll do is install my flywheel motors and wheels into the cage and wire those up with my 18 AWG wire for the extra current that the flywheels will pull. So that's my next thing. And we'll see what it looks like then. All right, so Merlin motors are installed into the flywheel cage. The Hurricane wheels are on the motors and they're more or less lined up. Red lead going to stick out the left hand side, black lead is going to stick out the right and I've got my diode between the two and I've got space in between for this part here. So now I just need to sort of lie these flat while also ensuring these wires go underneath the bottom of the motors and then Oh, look at that, it's in. Awesome. So, wires are all in the channels correctly. Let's go and uh, screw this down before it moves. So, you can see there's clearance from the top of these screws to the wheels. The front ones are great. Oh, it's nice and neat, nice and tight and all my wires are in the correct channels, that's good. So the next thing I'll do is fit the MOSFET. So remember the orange wire is a signal that's going to be connected to the left hand pin and then this uh, 18 gauge wire from the flywheels um, connect to one pin, the second will go to the battery negative. So uh, I'll cut those now and put that in place and then we can just and keep the MOSFET down there in that channel. That'll be nice and out of the way. Okay, so there's my MOSFET all wired up and all covered up in heat shrink, which is good. I can just sort of sit like so. That doesn't need to move now. Okay, let's talk about the pusher motor. Pusher motor, we want to complete a circuit, so positive and negative when this trigger is pulled. So when this trigger is pulled, the gray wire gets a positive charge connected to the positive end of the battery and then we'll have our 
black wire connecting to the battery negative. And so hitting the firing trigger will spin the motor, run the pusher, and darts come out the front. Okay, this is coming along well. So I've wired up my pusher motor. What you need to make sure is when the pusher turns, it needs to go clockwise so that the pusher itself moves correctly between these two parts. If it's going anti-clockwise, you can see the pusher will be well, well off center and whack against the edge of your magazine. So if you get the wires around the wrong way and it's spinning the wrong way, just a matter of switching them over at the base of this pusher motor. I've attached the piece that holds the pusher and that's just got a screw through. So this needs to spin freely, of course, um, but then it's fixed in place here. Make sure it doesn't protrude through the thickness of this. Now I can actually show you what this looks like when it's spinning now. So if I take my positive and my negative, and of course always test circuits with double A's, not LiPo's. So remember the red goes through the lower switch uh, to the orange and that goes to the next switch. That goes to the gray going to the motor. So if I hold the first one on, I haven't connected the flywheel motors so they're not spinning. But then when I press the second trigger, the firing trigger, we'll see this spin. And there you go, so that's spinning Clockwise, that's the correct way. Now, you'll notice when I release the trigger, this piece is sometimes to the side, sometimes back, sometimes forward, sometimes all the way forward. Now, if I wanted to change magazines, you can see how putting a new magazine, that dart's gonna hit this pusher, and that's gonna be a problem. So that's why we need to have this cycle control switch at the back here. What that's going to do is connect the pusher motor to either battery positive or the battery negative, which will feed through my white wire back down through the switch when the firing trigger is released so that the pusher motor continues to spin until it gets all the way back and presses on this switch. So when it presses here, we want to connect the white wire up to battery negative. That will break the motor. When the pusher is sort of sideways or forward, we want to connect the battery positive to this wire so that the motor keeps spinning until it gets around to here again. So one more switch to wire up. I'll do that and we'll see how it, how it looks then. Okay, so here we are with the cycle control switch. Again, common is the white wire, and that goes back to trigger switch and determines what the gray will get, positive or negative, when the switch is released. So normally open is negative. So when this switch is pressed, as in now, the motor will get negative on both tabs and so be braked, broken, braked, B-R-A-K-E-D. When the pusher is forward and this switch is open, then the normally closed will bring positive from the battery and that will keep this motor turning until it moves back and closes the switch. So here's how it looks. So I've got two leads from positive, one going through the switches to the motor, one going through the cycle control to the motor and negative goes both through the cycle control switch to the white and then gray, but also directly to the motor. So here's how it looks. Now you see that this switch is always pressed when the motor stops turning. And even if I release the trigger switch when the pusher is forward and this switch isn't pressed, watch what happens. As soon as I, as soon as I release this switch, the pusher motor gets positive charge until it turns around and closes this switch. So again, if I happen to release the trigger exactly when the pusher is forward, the pusher motor will automatically, without doing anything else, return to being fully retracted 
and closing the switch, stopping the motor. Okay, so the switches work fine for the pusher motor, the cycle control works fine for the pusher motor. I haven't tested the flywheel motors, I'll do that now. I'm not actually sure if 4AA's will turn these Merlins, but let's find out. Yes, it does. Slowly, but it does. And are they facing the right way? Let's see. Yes, they are. Excellent. Okay, so last thing to do is connect up my three positive wires and my two negative wires to my XT30 connector, and then we'll be ready to put it together and uh, do some firing. Okay, so I finished wiring this all up now. There's my XT30 connector and uh, it's a lot neater inside as you can see. I do want to talk about the pusher motor a bit because this one I did have a little bit of trouble with. So originally I got a few motors with different RPMs, so the motor spins at the same speed but the gear ratios are different, with the idea that if I wanted to increase or decrease the rate of fire I could just swap the motor over. But what I found was with the higher RPM versions I would get runaways. And what I mean by that is there wasn't enough time between the switch being pressed as this wheel rotates to slow and stop the motor before it got around to this point and release the switch, at which point the motor would begin speeding up again. So if the motor was spinning too fast and didn't get enough length of time when it was braked, then it would just keep spinning and the cycle control switch wouldn't actually do anything useful. In fact, it would be worse than useful, it'd be actively harmful because the motor would never stop spinning. So to get around that, you can see I've bent this lever so it sticks all the way out. And the purpose of that is to increase the length of time out of each rotation that this button is pressed by the lever. So now instead of the braking beginning when the wheel is sort of about there, instead it kicks in right about there. So that gives me from there, that's a quarter, until there. So that gives me about three eighths of the total rotation time of this wheel when the motor braking actually kicks in. And that's much better than, I think it was about a quarter of a turn or maybe even less when that button lever was more straight. So that's how I handled the cycle control at higher RPM, which was fine until I stuck a magazine in and began firing darts or trying to fire darts. And what I actually found is the cheap motors I got from AliExpress weren't strong enough to push the dart into the flywheels. So, so it'd start turning and it would get to here and it would encounter the resistance of the dart and it would just stall, which is no good of course. There's no point having a pusher motor that can't push your darts. So I asked some clever people for advice and the consensus was that cheap motors may not be strong enough to act as a pusher. So I was recommended to get some Pololu motors from a specialty hobbyist supplier of electronic parts. And I've got a few different ratios. So 30 to one is about 1000 RPM at six volts. 50 to one is about 600. Although with a lithium high voltage 2S, this is running sort of close to eight volts. So the 30 to one is rather than 1000 RPM, it's probably closer to 1300. The 50 to one goes from 600 at six volts to close to 800 at around eight volts. So I've got a 30 to one in place here which should give me about 1300 RPM. And happily, when I stuck some darts in and uh, pulled the trigger, it is plenty strong enough to push my darts into the flywheels. So this one is done. My battery is nice and slim. That'll hold it nice. Battery cover. There we are, and you can hear that, and you can hear that spinning. So it's good. Stick some darts in. I 
Okay, I think it's about 20 darts per second. I'll put up on the screen uh, exactly how many darts per second that was. That was a full mag of 15. It seems to be going pretty well. So the next thing is to take this outside, get some FPS numbers over the chronograph and see what it's like firing at my target. Okay, let's get some numbers of the Leapus over the chronograph. So I've got 15 worker Gen 3s. I'll try as close as I can to get single shots. I don't know if I'll be able to though. Um, so single shots first, then we'll try for some burst and then maybe full auto. Here we go. Okay, so min 110, max 135, average 128. Uh, as you saw, three shots <laughs> with a light touch was pretty common. A few times I think I got two shots at, uh, at a time. We'll stick another 15 in and see what, uh, what full auto gives us. So the first thing to note, 24 shots, it only counted nine of those 15. So the rate of fire even a bit too fast for the chronograph to record. Looking through the numbers, we've got lows down 104, 106, um, but most uh, around 120 to 130, which I think is pretty good performance for such a small package. So here we are 50 feet from the target as usual. I've got a couple of mags of worker Gen 3s. To start with, I'll try uh, burst and uh, then we'll just dump my bag for fun. Let's see how we go. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So there you have it. That's the Leapus by Jack Rabbit Nerfer, an ultra compact mag in grip, fully automatic flywheel blaster. Please leave any questions or comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.